Hello YouTube, welcome to Panzerkorps with Lieutenant Joker after my long explanation video before this. Here we are now with Panzerkorps again and this time you might remember last time we were on Kiev and now we're actually attacking Moscow. So let's jump right this into that. This is it. The Russian capital, Moscow. The capture of this city and with it the leadership of the Soviet Communist Party represents our best chance to end our campaign in the East with one swift stroke. While you were finishing off the Kiev pocket, the Soviets have had ample opportunity to reinforce their defenses. You should expect well-organized resistance from an entrenched enemy. In addition to Moscow, you will need to capture many other cities and the vital rail network for the Great Beer to fall and for us to maintain control of this vast country through the winter months. Success can only be guaranteed by speed. Advance your forces quickly and with purpose, Herr General, lest they become stuck in the mud or frozen corpses in the snow. So here we are on the map, as you can see. We're starting pretty much at a long front here in the west. We also have some parts here in the south which are auxiliary units down here. I'm going to actually get down there. These guys are auxiliary units. I can use them to go up here and probably take this city. I'm probably going to rely on pretty much a center line here. I'm probably not going to deploy anything down here. I'm going to try to make a mass push directly for Moscow in this line. These cities... I intend to take with these auxiliary units and these two cities at least this one and I think there's one over there as well yeah there and there I'm gonna take with these auxiliary groups and hopefully I'm gonna be able to push for this city as well if I'm not gonna be able to do that I should be able to split some of my core force uh, to take that but I initially intend to go full-on central for a push directly from Moscow here. Now, this is actually a pretty tough scenario because you have to do it in 15 turns, I believe, which is very, very tight because, as you can see here, those lines, that those are actually entrenchments, which means you actually have digged-in troops here, digged-in Russian troops, which hold several defensive lines, as you can see, and it actually takes some time to break through there and actually making it in 15 turns in this scenario is actually pretty hard for the same reason as historically about in the middle of the scenario bad weather weather sets in and that's slowing you down increasingly um, bad so muddy weather will slow you down very very much once the ground actually freezes over you have the same situation as historically. You can speed up again. You can even cross rivers a lot easier. But while you have the muddy weather, you're at a major disadvantage. And that happens usually in this scenario. So a lot of very good players on the Slytherin forums pretty much agree that this scenario, getting a decisive victory on this scenario, depends on a lot of luck with the weather. So I'm not going to even try that for two reasons. First of all, as I mentioned, it depends a little bit on luck on the weather. Um, and also, I don't want to win here with a major victory because then the war in the East is actually over. I want to drag out the war in the East a little bit longer. First, to show you a few more th scenarios in the East and also to get my forces a little bit more experience over time. So I actually have a more experienced core for the attack on the United States, which I can do since I already knocked the UK out. If I knock the uh, U the uh, Russians out, I can also go to the United States. It will be a little bit problematic since I took a lot of losses. And in Rommel, I don't actually have the prestige to go for um, elite replacement. So I don't really know how easy it will be in the United States, but we'll see about that. Let's start this scenario now. now I'm going to deploy most of my stuff pretty centrally. As you will see, most of my tanks actually directly up here, so they can't can go across the river right away. And a small force over here 
which will however also immediately go for the center that will just come from the south. So I'm doing a little scouting run here, moving some of my units just up to the front, working with my auxiliary forces here. Most of these guys are actually in the forest, especially that uh, cavalry, so I can't immediately attack that one. Just positioning my unit here several times. I'm not really sure where to put it because I don't want to get spotted in the truck. I really need to get some spotting in here first before I know what to do because there's a lot of close terrain there and I don't want to get entangled in close terrain fights with my tanks. That would be really, really bad. Getting some targets here, immediately bombarding the crap out of them as much as I can. Whoa, that was a really good straving run there. Some artillery attack on that guy and I should be able to finish him off with one of my panzers. Now these in initial attacks are very, very simple. Um, those are very unprepared troops, light tanks, recon cars, not, nothing too bad. But once you reach the offensive lines, it gets a little bit more difficult. But all in all, this scenario is not really hard to win. The biggest issue here is not the Soviet resistance. The biggest issue here is absolutely the weather. The Russians are still unprepared, the German push is pretty much still going, but they had the chance to dig in because we had the delay at Kiev, so they are at little dis a little advantage right now that they had the time to dig in and they will be able to delay us long enough for us to run into the problem of the Russian winter. So you will see that. As long as we still have good weather, we can actually push easily through their lines. Once the bad weather sets in, we're in for a little bit of trouble. Just pushing through the lines here. Slowly preparing, just moving up. Not making any major engagements here yet. That will come not before we hit the first defensive line. There may be a few light tanks or so being on the move, trying to intercept, but there's no major forces pretty much between us and the first defensive line. Most of the Russian troops in this scenario are actually very, very defensively positioned, just waiting for us in their entrenched positions, and we have to dig them out. So this is not really a mobile war for the Russians. The guys on the move are definitely the Germans, and you really have to be on the move on this one. You can't really afford any kind of delay, which makes the entire weather part very, very difficult. Yeah, as mentioned, oh yeah, that uh, T-34 actually got a good shot at one of my recon cars. Doesn't matter whether it was an auxiliary and it didn't get destroyed, so it's all good. But we need to get rid of that guy. I don't want a T-34 in my back. Yeah, it's at one strength point. We can take him out with a fighter. No, we can't. It's kind of annoying. Just attacking here on the east. The potential here to maybe take the TT-34 on the next turn. But yeah, I'll go for, go for it here with my half track. That way he doesn't actually earn the prestige for getting that city. I would have gained prestige of course for getting it back. But I don't really want him in my back and waste another turn. So I took care of him right away. Here making sure I stay either out of reach of their spotting units or out of close terrain. I don't want to get spotted in close terrain and engaged by infantry. That would be very, very bad. Yeah. At least force them to retreat out of the swamp area. That is very good. Took care of that guy 
And now we should be able to finish off that infantry down there. So yeah, most of the mobile units have now been taken care of. As I mentioned, there's not a lot of them, and only light tanks that are, and a few recon units. Nothing, nothing major. Most of the units are entrenched and waiting for us to clash with them. So a few artillery attacks on this city, so we actually can drive them out there. We'll get those, that city in the next turn, for now. Just advancing here. Keeping my artillery in the back. Protected by my air units and other artillery. Just slowly moving up here. Always an eye on the weather report. That is something that you will do very much in these later month scenarios in Russia. You will always have an eye on the weather report because the last thing you want is to see on the weather report that it's going to be raining because if it starts raining it's going to be muddy. And that will usually stay that way for quite a few turns and that is very very bad for you. Yeah, the Russian Air Force is also very strong here. Not unstoppable, but quite annoying. Because again, it's slowing you down. Now, I'm not protecting my Stuk here very much, but it is on an entrenchment. Hex and the Stuk already has very good ground defense and on an entrenchment hex it is pretty much capable of take, taking care of itself. As long as it's not being attacked by heavy tanks or heavy anti-tank units, it's pretty much fine. And there's not many tanks in this scenario at all. Most of the tank force of the Russians we have actually destroyed. There's stuff, stum stuff coming in for Operation Uranus, the uh, counter-attack, but that's still quite a while off still. So right now there's actually not much armored resistance whatsoever. Which is exactly why the Germans were so confident of winning the war outright. But... Yeah, we'll see whether that's gonna happen. <laughs> not this year, probably. No, it's not gonna happen this year because I'm not gonna make it happen. I also didn't try whether I actually could do it. I think I actually couldn't do it on normal difficulty because I just don't have the prestige to get my units to the uh, experience level that they would need to make this happen. And even then, it depends a lot on luck in terms of weather. And I just don't think I could do it on this difficulty level. But since I don't even want to, that's actually working out. Come on, force them to retreat. No, ah well, let's attack from the river. I'm gonna move into the city so they don't have any spawning on that unit anymore, so they should be fine. Yep, there's that stupid cavalry. They're in close terrain, though I really want to get them out of there. This is quite a risky attack, but I really want to get rid of these guys. Not only because they're actually in a very, very good defensive position in that forest, they also have quite a, f quite a few, uh, quite good spotting. So they acting kind of as a recon unit there, and I don't want that, especially not in my back. Take some very risky attacks here. Probably shouldn't have done that. I should have waited for my artillery to move in there so I could get suppression fire on the enemy artillery. But yeah, that often happens to me when I'm on a scenario where I'm a little bit under pressure to get uh, stuff done fast. Make some hasty decisions. That are usually not the best ones to make. 
I actually see that next turn it's gonna be rainy, so I'm moving my efforts a little bit more aggressively here because I know they can't be attacked next turn. As you can see, first turn of muddy weather, really, really bad. As you can see, this infantry is quite capable of holding the line for quite some time on that on that entrenchment hex. Also, the attack values of artillery are, I think, halved in rain, so I don't even have the full attack anymore. Also, the the defense is, uh, I think, the initiative is capped, so my defensive is actually uh, bad because more of the enemy is actually able to shoot back. So yeah, all in all muddy weather and rainy weather is very bad for offensive operations. It costs you more fuel to move, your attacks are not as efficient, your air force is out of the game, it's all kinds of bad. But we can't uh, wait. In some of the Grand Campaign scenarios, which you will later see, once I finish this campaign, I might start the Grand Campaign. Might be that I first show you Ally Core, I don't know. But once you see the Grand Campaign scenarios, you will realize that in those scenarios, you actually can afford to wait out some turns of bad weather. You don't have a lot of time, so you can't do that too flexibly so uh, you can't sit around five turns and waiting for good weather to return but one or two turns you can usually afford to just sit back if everything else is moving smoothly so then you can afford that delay sometimes you absolutely cannot in this campaign you're much too press pressed for time so if you have bad weather you're just out of luck Not making good progress in the south down there, actually. A little bit annoyed by that. Having to move very carefully up here since I need that artillery support. Also, these guys in the uh, forest here were delayed because they had to take care of that artillery, that cavalry that I couldn't kill, that delayed them again. They won't be able to move up to us in the mud weather, especially in the forest for some time. So yeah, all kinds of things already slowing me down here. This is really one scenario where literally every single move that you make counts and even then you might not be in time. It's pretty easy to come pretty much to the gates of Moscow. It's very, it's actually very historically accurate in, in terms of what you can do. It's pretty easy to actually advance pretty much to the position where the Germans historically were when they got uh, halted by the weather and by the Russian counterattack. It's pretty much accurate. You can pretty much advance up to that point every single time. But you won't be able to advance any further than that. And I'm talking about the time allotted here for a decisive victory. By that time, turn 15, I think it is, by that time you're pretty much at a normal play, you're pretty much um, where the Germans were historically. You can watch that actually, I'm not gonna finish it in 15 turns. So you can keep an eye on the turn count and see where I am at turn 15. That should be pretty much at the same point close to the gates of Moscow but not quite there yet where the Germans were exactly historically. That is easy to do. Getting through to Moscow and taking it all in that time that is incredibly hard to do. Which is actually nice about this campaign doing stuff that is historically that historically didn't happen is very hard. Doing stuff that historically did happen is usually pretty easy. Well, not easy, maybe, but it can be done once you figured out how to how to play the game. 
So any battle that the Germans historically lost, you probably will lose here if you're a normal player. So if you're a decent player but not really good, you probably will play exactly as the Germans did. You will have a lot of victories early on and then you will slowly um, you will be halted in front of Moscow, then you will run into Stalingrad, where you will probably lose, and yeah, things will go downhill from there. You will also probably not get France taken care of in time for Sea Lion, Operation Sea Lion. That's actually very. Yeah, you saw that in that playthrough. That actually takes a lot of time. Uh, a lot of accurate timing to get that done in, in the allotted time for decisive victory. So you probably won't get to attack the United, United Kingdom. And with them still in play, you will um, eventually run into Operation Overlord, D-Day, in 1944. And then you will have the two-front war. And in this campaign, you can then decide which uh, front you will actually want to defend on. In 1943, I think you can then decide to jump to the Italian front or remain on the Eastern front. And from the Italian front, you can then move to the defense of D-Day. And let me tell you, defending against that uh, invasion is actually pretty tough. Not so much because of the strength of the units that are landing, but because you need your tanks for the counterattack. And as historically, the uh, American and Royal Air Forces pretty much pin you in place because they completely destroy your Panzer units if you keep them in, if you try to move them in the open. So it is very, very important by that time to have a core that can actually beat anything in terms of Air Force that the Allies throw, throw at you. Because as long as the Air Force is not taken care of, or the Air Forces, I should say, because British and American forces combine there and there's a whole shit lot of them that are attacking you. As long as they are not taken care of, your tanks have no chance whatsoever. It's actually how I play that scenario usually. I keep all my units in the back. Well, I don't know how I played in this game. I actually haven't played that scenario in this game, but in the historical Panzer, uh, Panzer in general. <laughs> I played it that way and it should probably work in in this uh, game as well. I kept all my panzers very far back in the south and actually gave the uh, allies pretty much freedom to establish bridgeheads and just fought out the air war first. And once I had sufficiently weakened the Royal Air Force, I jumped with all my up to that point unharmed tanks because I didn't... Um, put them in a position where they could be harmed by the Air Force. By that time I could then move up with my Panzers with again air superiority and crush the uh, bridgeheads and drive them back into the, into the sea. And that is something that the Germans just didn't, uh, weren't able to accomplish by that time. The German Luftwaffe was just not capable anymore of performing that task. And that is also portray portrayed very well in that scenario. In this game, if you can't establish air superiority, you're pretty much fucked in that scenario. You just cannot win there. You can get a minor victory, I believe, because you don't actually have to avoid the bridgeheads. You just have to hold a certain line that the Germans managed to hold historically. So it is not a total disaster, but you cannot prevent the invasion. The Allied Air Force is just too strong for that. In the east, here, the Russian Air Force is still just annoying. They will be able to slow you down long enough for you to maybe miss your decisive victories, but they won't be able to stop you. But they will keep you from winning the war if you let them, so... Even in the east, it is very important to have a very strong Air Force. But in the West, it is a lot more important because they don't just have a strong air force, they also have huge number 
because, as mentioned, the Brit once the British and Royal, uh, once the yeah the British and the Royal, those are the same. The Royal Air Force and the American Air Force, the U.S. Air Force combine. That is really an incredible number of planes and squadrons and bombers and all sorts of stuff that you have to take care of. And that is really going to slow you down and sometimes outright destroy your armored forces. And that is something you absolutely cannot afford by that time. So making a short pause here because we're pretty much at half. As you can see, we're at turn 8. By turn 16, we already need to have taken Moscow. It will actually let me pause. Just to get you an idea on uh, what we actually managed so far. So if you look at the map, this is Moscow. And we've pretty much managed to move up to the central point that I wanted to go to. I have a few units down here marching for this target. Not sure how that's going to work out. That's not not actually what I intended to do. We actually haven't crossed, crossed this river yet. So Tula is not really under pressure yet. That is not good. But we'll see how that goes. We're pretty much halfway to Moscow. So, so far it's actually looking pretty good. But we'll see whether we can keep that momentum up. So this is... Just about one turn after halftime. These guys need to go here. They're pretty much halfway there. They started over here. They're pretty much halfway there. This group is halfway there. This group, yeah, basically is halfway there. This group is lagging a little bit behind. So let's see how it goes. Moving past the city up here know that I need to keep the momentum going. I just need one unit up here to actually capture the town. There's no enemy units in there anymore. And here's the next defensive line. And they're very well digged in. So that will take quite some time to dig those guys out. So this artillery fire is actually not intended to prepare an attack, but just meant to dig them out. So once all my units arrive, especially my infantry, I will actually be in a position to attack them. Because at entrenchment level 8, I really shouldn't attack. Moving up here with my tanks, they alone will probably not have a chance. But I'm also moving in there to just get an idea on what's actually going on. Yeah, the weather is not incredibly favorable. And they also really need to get past this river. Now I'm actually moving my units into position here to cross the river. I don't want to use the bridge in the south. I actually want to cross the river up here. Because I feel I actually don't have the time anymore to take the route in the south. There is a city there that I would need to take to get the bridge under control. There's actually an airfield there too that I would like to have, but I don't feel I don't have the time anymore. Made some mistakes down there in the south and now I nearly need to pick up the pace. Otherwise I might not even get the minor victory anymore. Because that's easier to do, that doesn't mean it is easy to do. Yeah, these guys are heavily entrenched that are still inflicting quite a few losses on me here. This is probably not such a good idea, but I'm on an entrenched field, so this might actually work out for my tank. But I'm splitting my forces up again there, so I'm, I'm not really sure about that decision, but let's see how it goes. Move my units on the river here. That takes quite some time to ford a river, so... That is not the best choice I could have made, but I think it's still better than going completely down south and trying to take the bridge. Because up there I at least don't have to fight any units. Yeah, running out of fuel, that's also an issue that you will have in muddy weather because your units spend a whole lot of fuel. I think they spend double the fuel than they would in normal weather. So running out of fuel is bad and even worse, you only get half supply if your unit resupplies in bad weather. So 
sometimes you would say okay bad weather just wait it out and resupply that's actually also not a very good thing to do because the resupplying is not efficient because you don't get full resupply in bad weather so yeah bad weather is really bad it's really completely bad there's not anything good about it muddy weather is really really nasty Also, a lot of units back. At least it's not raining anymore, but we're still having muddy weather, so. Of course, the lack of rain now gives the Russian Air Force a chance to strike again. And the Russian counter air units, of course. And they inflict quite a few losses on my Stuka here. Ugh. Gladly, they all only took one hit, only got one hit on it because with a few better rolls for the enemy AI, they actually would have been able to take out that Stuka completely. So, slowly taking these air units apart, but just one at a time. And yeah. Now these units are actually crossed the river, but now they're out of fuel and I need to refuel them. There's also tanks down here, which uh, makes me also be happy that I actually avoided them because fighting it out with a few T-34s down there would also not have been my choice. So going up north here might have actually been the better choice. Because at bad weather, I wouldn't have had the air support to actually beat those T-34s. And my tanks at this point cannot really easily beat a T-34. They can do it, but they would take some losses. Something I can't really afford right now. Yeah, not much, not much to comment on here. As you can see, there's a lot of entrenched units that I just need to plow through. Very slow, very tiresome process, but it needs to be done. Slowly, unit by unit. And as you can see, this entire process takes a whole lot of time. You need several attacks to take one unit out. And it takes quite a lot of time. We need to prepare every attack because the units are very well entrenched. That all takes a good load of time. And with weather, it bad weather, it even takes longer. You're running out of fuel and all sorts of stuff is happening. Okay, now we can move the artillery up here, which should help us out there. Usually it's not a good idea to split up your forces like that. You should always keep them together. If this was a bad decision, I should have moved it out of visual range. I really need to take these bombers out. So I hope you will actually split... Oh boy, that was a good hit. Small IL-16s, I believe they are, are actually very effective in their, stra in their straving run. So yeah. Yeah, they actually left their bombers alone, undefended, so I might actually be able to take some of these bomber units out. Ah, do I have another fighter somewhere? Yeah. Okay, at least one of those bomber units has been taken care of. Those tactical bombers are very, very annoying. Yeah, and as you can see, that was a very well-prepared attack and still we haven't gotten that unit out of there. Okay, one artillery gone, but there's still two very heavily entrenched anti-tank units up there. And I really need to take care of that infantry. Even with artillery support, they managed to hold on. Yeah, that will take some time to dig these guys out. Nope. As you can see, these reinforcements, uh, these entrenchment fields, these fortification fields with high entrenchment, I think the base entrenchment is four, which means once you move onto such a field, 
you immediately have entrenchment four. You don't need to wait four turns to entrench that much. You immediately start at four, which is a huge load of entrenchment that you get for free. And that is very, very hard to dig a unit out of there. It's not close to rain, so if you're fighting also against the full, uh, the full ground defense, whether you attack with infantry or not. So it doesn't even matter which unit is on it, even a tank will get the full benefit on there. So whatever unit is on there, they're incredibly hard to get out of there. So it was really a big a big disadvantage that uh, that entire Kiev thing happened and the entire German center was delayed by that much. First they the forces the Russian forces actually got a chance to dig in and also Germany was delayed so much that they actually ran into bad weather. Now nobody knows what would have happened if uh, the Germans would have attacked earlier. They probably would have been able to take Moscow, I have no doubt of that. Whether that would have actually made any difference is another story. There are some reports that Stalin was actually thinking about um, surrendering at some point in during that attack on in 41. Oh boy, that attack is in trouble there. But nobody knows what would have really happened and wh whether he would actually have done that. Yeah, finally. Okay, now we have punched a hole in the Russian lines down there, so now we can actually flank that city. And hopefully we get another fighter unit taken care of here. At least we weakened them a whole lot. Oh, that city is actually empty, that is good to know. Now that we have a recon unit right next to it, they can't also can't buy any unit to occupy it with. So that is pretty good. It's also important that we take this anti-air unit out. Now this you can do, you can attack units on these fortification hexes with panzers because again it's not no close to rain so panzers don't actually get any uh, penalty for it. But they do get their initiative capped I think. So they're not as effective as they could be. But they're not running any great risk, they're just not inflicting as much damage, but they will not take any more damage in return, like they would if they attacked into close terrain. Oh boy. Trying all my best here with my artillery to Samo dig these guys out, but uh, as you can see, it takes a lot of time. Now that I actually got to refuel these guys, I'm moving them up very, very fast. As you can see, we're already on turn 12 here, and I am not even close to that town. Moving one tank here to the north, I realize I'm running out of fuel, so I move it a little bit more carefully. So another tank that I need to refuel before they can attack another one here. The infantry hasn't even crossed the river yet. And these T-34s I want to take care of from the air so they can't even get involved in the fight. Or if they do in a very weakened state, I'm actually moving another Stuka in there because I really want those tanks to not be able to outflank me in the south. I want them pinned down by my air force so they can't do anything. Okay, he wasn't able to buy a unit to move in there, so he moved another unit that was around there in there. Okay, at least he doesn't have any units in here, just one unit of Falschenjäger. Those should be easy to take care of, so at least that city up there is not in big trouble. So I move my tanks down here in south to actually form a shield against these tanks that might move in now. Since that you that city up there has us spotted now these tanks in the south these t-34s might now move in 
to defend the city, so I kind of lay a trap down there, and I hope one of those T-34s at least will run into me, and I will be able to ambush them. Yep. Taking that guy uh, out when he was trying to reinforce on the airfield. I hope I'm gonna be able to take that airfield actually this turn. Ah, and just missed taking that guy out. But I should be able to take the airfield in the north there, so they shouldn't be able to refuel there. It's also another tactic, uh, tactic to actually beat the enemy air force by simply taking all the airfields. That way they won't have any place to land anymore and they will just drop out of the sky. Come on. Yeah, still too heavily entrenched. Took Nindy no damage. As you can see, an attack by a 7th strength panzer did nearly nothing and the initiative cap actually makes sure we still get some damage in return because we nearly don't get any kind of really effective shots in there. But at least we can move around them now. Turn 13, we're approaching Moscow, but we only have two turns to take Moscow. That is at this point already pretty much impossible. So you can already see where this will end. We're gonna be stopped short, quite short of Moscow. Now we will win this scenario, but a decisive victory is already completely out of the question. Two turns is not enough. Because every of these, every one of these units in and around Moscow is entrenched by eight, so I would need to, I would need at least two turns of artillery preparation to actually get these guys out of there. Can it be done in a decisive victory at all? Well, you will see. I will move into Moscow again in 1943. And then I have to get a decisive victory if I'm going to be attacking the United States. So you will see whether I manage to or not. Yeah, yeah, I definitely don't manage it in 15 turns, as you can see. Will I manage it in 15 turns then? Well... Wait and see. For now, we're still in 1941, and this time we're probably not gonna make it. Not quite. Okay, this bomber is now out of ammunition. So he's not destroyed, but at least he won't be able to attack me. Okay, down here, the trap that we tried to lay didn't actually work. The panzers didn't attack. So let's try to get a counter attack in here. Actually damage them before they can damage us. As you can see, against T-34s, that's easier said than done. Because my panzers are not that good yet in 1941. That will change. Of course, the Russian panzers will also get, uh, the Russian tanks will also get better, but um, we'll see how it goes. With this prestige situation where my panzers actually can't collect that much experience, I might actually remain at a pretty high disadvantage in terms of uh, armored force strength in the east. We'll see how that goes. I'm probably gonna have to play the Battle of Kursk, which I will have to win with a decisive victory also, so that is gonna be a major uh, armored forces clash. So we will see how that goes. As you can see, even an anti-air unit against infantry 
digged in, can defend quite well. Alright. We have approached the river. We're really at Moscow's doorstep here. As you can see, these T-34s can't really destroy us outright, but they're pretty much exchanging shots with us, um, trading damage, which is not really ideal. We're not superior to them at all. They're not completely inferior either, but... Um, I have the newest equipment that the German army could offer right now, so... I don't really have anything that is superior to them. And that's with the best stuff that I can get. A lot of German units at this point didn't have the best stuff. There were still a lot of outdated tanks in service. Alright, another city mine. And now I approach the final defensive line. And it is quite a defensive line, as you can see. A lot of high entrenchment units, infantry, anti-tank units, all sorts of stuff. No chance of getting through there without a whole lot of artillery helping. So I need to move in as much artillery as I can to prepare a breakthrough here. Also still haven't made much progress down here. And this is already the final turn, as you can see. So I also would have needed to uh, take this city in this turn, which also obviously is not gonna happen. This city, however, I could have taken in this turn, so while we're really late down here, this obje objective of this uh, southern group, they actually did their job. They took the objective in time. Actually, due to the uh, fact that they avoided these tanks. The armored force completely avoided these and now uh, is fighting it out with them, delaying them, completely preventing them to... Uh, take part in the fight about the city. Of course, these panzers are also now taken out of the fight. But they wouldn't have been able to get there in time anyway, so... That southern group actually did a very good job. Here in the middle, we just got delayed too much. That anti-air unit that uh, went into anti-tank mode there would have been incredibly dangerous had they tried to attack one of my panzer units. But against infantry, they're not so bad. As you can see here, now we actually have a major advantage again. Because now that the river is frozen, we can actually move across it easily. The frozen river counts as normal terrain, so now the river doesn't block us anymore. By this time we have the advantage again, but obviously that's too late. Forcing a surrender here. So by the time you get the advantage again, because it's winter and everything is frozen again, so you can actually move quickly again and even cross rivers easily, that usually doesn't happen before turn 16, so it is too late. Also, I'm also able to move across this uh, small lake up there, which is also frozen. Even that counts as normal terrain now. All rivers and lakes freeze over in winter once if you have frozen terrain. Open sea, of course, doesn't. But everything that isn't open sea, anything that's a lake or a river, is considered frozen in this kind of terrain situation. So now all these uh, southern units can also cross the river here easily and help. 
as you can see. I probably should have bombarded that artillery in the middle to force the surrender and attack that outer one to suppress it a little bit. But you never know. Worked out anyway. Forcing that artillery to retreat. Unfortunately, we cannot continue the attack on that, but let's try our luck with this infantry on the airfield. Yeah, and that unit didn't have any chance against my infantry. Already moving all my air force to Russia to prepare for the final attack. Now it turns 16. Even moving some units by rail here. Yep, that's exactly what I meant. That thing nearly slaughtered my panzer there. So did this guy. These anti-air units uh, um, that are able to switch to anti-tank mode are very, very dangerous. They were actually not able to do that when the game came out. That was uh, added by a patch where the AI was improved. And that has made the AI a whole lot better because the anti-air units are now actually a lot more dangerous. Because nearly all Russian anti-air units can do that. Yep, we just lost our mobile anti-air unit, which is not so bad. That Panzer is a little bit in trouble up there, since it is now out of fuel. Beginning a slow process of digging out the units in Moscow. Don't actually have that many turns left overall, so we can't really afford to uh, take too long here. Otherwise, we miss even the minor victory. Might be able to force the surrender here. Nope. Taking that airfield. Now that airfield east of Moscow is important now because I can refuel there once I take it. If you also take that airfield far in the east where these units are approaching now, then you can actually cut the Russian Air Force, if it is alive still by then, completely off of any airfield to refuel. By then you will have complete air superiority then. Okay, now we have the city. Now we just need to make sure they can't take it back. Taking this artillery out would be very important. Also taking the airfield to make sure. We can move, in, move that panzer in because we can move artillery in place to defend it, which I'm actually not going to do. I'm moving it up to support Moscow, which is okay too, I guess. And here actually comes some Siberian reinforcements already. And I really need to be careful here because these guys are just light troops, but they can hurt. As you can see, now this recon unit is really in trouble now, and I need to make sure these guys, as you can see, also the infantry up there is counterattacking. Now they're really starting a counterattack to get me out of there, and I need to make sure that isn't gonna happen. I need to keep pushing now with all I got.
Now that Panzer has been taken care of. We're taking the airfield, moving that recon unit out of there. Taking care of these light tanks. And that recon unit, just weakening them all. Reinforcing that Panzer and get it, making sure it has fuel again for the next turn. Trying, trying to force a surrender on this anti-tank unit, which should work out. Yeah. Now we should be able to take that infantry out down there. Not actually doing this in the most efficient way. But doesn't matter now anyway, since uh, decisive victory is not an option anymore. But once you get back to Moscow, I'll show you how you really do this in a much faster way. Some of the southern tanks have arrived. That one fighter is by the airfield that I mentioned earlier. If you take that airfield as well, then the Russian Air Force doesn't have any airfields left by this point. But that is not an option anymore. That would be a possible target for the southern group. But that is not an option anymore right now, since the southern group was actually delayed. Some would actually argue that in 1943 it is easier to take Moscow. Um, you will have to be the judge of that. I will show you both versions. I've beaten them both. So... I would say they are both pretty hard. Yeah. Tried to move in there, but uh, there's actually an anti-tank unit defending that. I might actually lose that recon unit there. Ooh, this auxiliary infantry is also in big trouble. But now at least it moved back into in inf artillery support and onto a, f a fortification hex and that actually saved it. So that was exactly the right direction to retreat to. Come on, take that guy out. One more. There we go. Okay, he didn't attack. So that weaken unit survives. Let's see whether we can take care of the remaining Russian Air Force here. One more attack and the bomber should be gone. The fighter is completely out of ammo and didn't pose much of a threat anymore anyway. Yeah, this was a bad decision. Now that guy actually retreats out of range. But this guy we can take care of. Should have probably attacked the recon unit first. Doesn't really matter. Moscow is the important part. Okay, all the defensive units around Moscow are now gone. Now for Moscow itself. Another Ritter points. Come on guys, one more push.
very slowly getting there. I'm probably going to be able to make it by the next turn. So 20 turns, that should be it. Not necessarily a great formation that I have going on here, but uh, I'm pretty much just moving every everybody in there. One more gone. Those guys are also gone. All those reinforcements units from the east are now gone. And we have Moscow. So 20 turns, guys. 20 turns. Five turns less to win. Is that possible? You would be amazed how many turns you can uh, shave off by playing more efficiently and we even got to finish off the Air Force so there we go we made it in 20 turns not a decisive victory but we got it we completely avoided all these units down here not a very big deal they're not really that dangerous um, just a few light units nothing major they're just holding the line. And yeah, by doing that, we actually got pretty much everything that we wanted to take in the south in time. Everything in the north that we wanted to take in time. In the center, we got, yeah, delayed too much by both the weather and some bad decisions. But 20 turns, we made it. Not quite a decisive victory. The Russian bear is not yet beat, but we at least got them a bloody nose. So let's see what comes after this. Well, what came after Winter 40, 41? Well, if you don't know, you'll see. Keep your heads down, folks. I'm going to see you on the next one.